So the earth system uh, is divided into components, into subsystems. The main systems are land, ocean and atmosphere. Uh, then there are uh, already other systems that have been defined at the moment in earth system models. For example, the cryospheric component and land ice components are a separate subsystem uh, coupled to the rest of the system. Now, when we have these components and subsystems, we can develop them independently, but then we need to describe the interactions and interfaces with other uh, components of the system. This can mean in terms of, for example, uh, let's say photosynthesis uh, in the land vegetation model. Uh, there is a byproduct, uh, this kind of volatile vapors that are emitted during or after photosynthesis in plants. Now this flux of uh, vapors is then directed from the land model to the atmospheric model. So the is a flux uh, that is growing through the interface of land and atmospheric models. Uh, then in the atmosphere, these vapors are passed on to the aerosol chemistry submodel uh, of the atmospheric part, and there it is forming aerosol particles. These aerosol particles can then influence the precipitation uh, as uh, cloud condensation nuclei, and then again the precipitation in the atmospheric model uh, is uh, deposited as rain back to the land or ocean surface. So there is even possibility of feedback mechanisms uh, where something initiating in the land model uh, goes through several processes and several sub-models and is then coming back to where it uh, initiated. So this is then forming feedback loops inside the whole system. In principle, a climate model or an earth system model is targeted to model all natural processes. <coughs> this means that humans are there described as an external forcing to the system, which is perturbing the system to a different state. Human activities are described externally, for example, in terms of land use, CO2 emission, black carbon emission, or other perturbations that the human activities can make that are relevant for the climate system. Now, where is this information coming from? It can be taken from um, emission inventories that the nations are collecting, for example, for greenhouse gases. Land use information could be coming directly from satellites. And also we have uh, separate models uh, that are used uh, to account for human activities, integrated assessment models. Now these are models uh, that uh, describe the human systems, uh, for example agriculture, uh, economics, and also they have a typically uh, simplified climate model inside them. These models are then used to generate, for example, the scenarios for the future, and the results are then given to these climate and earth system models. Very much so, because uh, what we do in earth system sciences and climate modeling, we divide the system into uh, separate components that we analyze, develop and constrain separately, and then finally make into one holistic integrated earth system model. Now in each step of this uh, disintegration of uh, the system to its components and then putting the system back together, there is a lot of uh, system uh, thinking behind it. We of course need for each system component uh, experts uh, that are uh, looking into their specific field. We also then need experts that are looking at, for example, the interfaces between the components and know what are the most important information fluxes from component to another.